Well, look, we can stay uh, with Ukraine and get you more analysis uh, on uh, today's uh, goings on. Dr. Domitila Sagra Mosso is a security le senior lecturer, I should say, in security and development at the Department of War Studies at King's College London. Uh, thanks very much for speaking to uh, France 24, Domitila. Uh, you would have heard our correspondent there speaking about this meeting today at uh, Chequers between uh, Vladimir Zelensky and equally Rishi Sunak. One would imagine that this kind of round or, or, or European charm offensive, you might call it, by Zelensky is aimed at this kind of expected Ukrainian counteroffensive that could come sometime soon? Uh, yes, I think what is really interesting about this round is, again, that it shows very strong commitment from uh, the four major European uh, economic powers. Uh, so the countries in Europe that are really relevant in terms of having also the industrial capacity to continue providing military support to Ukraine, which I think is very important, not only in the immediate term, but also in the short and long and, and medium term. So I think that this is really why, why this uh, sort of commitment from these countries is, is significant, because it shows that Europe is also ready to sort of provide uh, the necessary support in, in, in ammunition, in um, artillery, uh, tanks, uh, support vehicles, uh, air defense systems, and now uh, with the UK potentially also, you know, helping with training pilots. Uh, so I think this could maybe potentially be open the road towards um, uh, military aircraft being provided in some way. I think we are not there yet, but this could be sort of pro potentially the beginning of it. I mean, um, the, U the UK today, uh, Domitila, was really kind of underlining uh, the extent to which they want to be an ally uh, for Ukraine. You would have heard uh, Rishi Sunak uh, comparing uh, Vladimir Zelensky to, to, to Winston uh, Churchill. Th there's also this idea that the UK, following Brexit, doesn't want to s appear as though it's, a, it, it's standing alone, ultimately. Uh, yes, yes, uh, in, in, in some senses. But I think that since the beginning of the war, I think uh, the UK has collaborated very closely with European allies and uh, within the NATO framework. So the UK has not really been left uh, on its own as far as uh, the security of the European continent is concerned, because you have countries also such as Norway, which um, are members of NATO and, you know, Turkey. So, you know, the UK is not uh, alone in security terms, uh, you know, in the European framework. But certainly, you know, this collaboration uh, with uh, the European allies is, is relevant also because I think it's an indication of how, you know, Britain as well is trying to uh, mend fences with European countries. But I think what is significant here is that uh, all four European countries that Zelensky has, has visited uh, from Italy, Germany, France and the UK, they're all committed to supporting the war effort in the long run. The narrative and the declarations are very similar of, of support and commitment, uh, you know, and I think there is, uh, you know, within the Rammstein um, framework, you know, there is also efforts to make sure that, uh, you know, there is, uh, there is proper coordination uh, and, you know, and that the support provided you know, helps Ukraine now to sort of carry out this counteroffensive. I mean, if we think a little bit, uh, Domitila, about what's happening uh, on the ground, you will have uh, no doubt seen uh, this supposed leak uh, that's been published in the Washington Post, suggesting that uh, the, the head of the Wagner uh, mercenary group was, you know, OK to give up uh, Russian uh, forces' positions if uh, Ukrainian troops agreed to pull out of Bakhmut. What, what do you make of that and this kind of leak uh, coming out, uh, supposedly, from Ukraine? Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't give it too much uh, attention. I mean, that, you know, there are various options. It is it could be a sort of a disinformation effort by uh, Wagner at the time, uh, when relations were better at the time in January with the Ministry of Defense. So they could have tried to convince the Ukrainians to attack in certain areas, and that would have potentially been known by the Russians. It could also have uh, already underlined the challenges and the, the sort of friction between Wagner and uh, the Ministry of Defense and, and, you know, an effort by Wagner to show that it is, you know, and its leadership, that it's stronger within the sort of the security structures and the forces carrying out the, the offensive in Ukraine. Uh, I mean, I think it is good that the Ukrainians apparently didn't really take that very seriously. 
uh, because it is very risky to do that, and uh, and it's it's very difficult to know whether this is a sort of a genuine offer. Also, it would have meant that uh, Ukraine had to sort of uh, leave Bakhmut, uh, and uh, this you know was not something that was acceptable for Ukraine. It's still not today. They uh, you know Ukrainians still uh, control a very small part of the city uh, in the west, but they still really trying hard to make sure they do not lose it completely. And as we know, they're trying to advance on the flanks in the south and in the north, you know, to open their lines of uh, support, of, of logistical support to Bakhmut, but also potentially maybe to sort of further weaken uh, Russian forces in Bakhmut. All right, Dr. Domitila Sagramoso of King's College London. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us today.